All right, I know, I know. I already did a video, very similar subject, but this time I'm doing it with Bamboo Studio. As I was trying to get this QR code to work on the Ice Slider game, and ran into some troubles when doing it with Bamboo Studio. Unfortunately, you can't just use the horizontal bar and then add a pause like you can with the vertical bar. Annoying, but there is a workaround and I'll show you how to do that. At the end of the video, I do cover some potential improvements that could be possible if you know how to do it. With that said, let's get started. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so first things first, open up Bamboo Studio then create new project, and you will see that we only have one filament, we actually want two, and then let's add our models. So you'll see that I have two different models. This is what you're wanting. You could probably do this with paint, you'll just have to manually paint it and then do similar steps to what we're doing right now. But anyways, once you add them, you'll see that load these files as a single object with multiple parts, select yes. Technically we don't want this, but for this time being we do. Uh, fix your scale if you need to, and right away we're just going to make them into a separate objects. The reason we combined them into one object was because otherwise it offsets it a bit and it's kind of a pain to align. And now that we have this, select your second object and make sure it's a different color. It makes this a lot easier. Then slice plate, and you will see that there is a little prime tower right here, and we got the model correctly. But one thing that you will want to check is that here, make sure to select your indenting model and then go to scale make sure it's whatever your layer height is you see that mine is actually 0.27 so it's probably close enough but i'll just do 0.2 just to guarantee that it only goes into one layer then when we leave that you should be able to slice it again and scroll to the bottom you'll see that we have that, but then go one layer up. If the, it does still have an indenting model, you have a problem, make sure it is lower and more correctly aligned with your layer height. All right, so next up, I'm just gonna change the infill because you can actually see it on this model and I don't really like this type. Changing it to eight and lightning. All right, so I think that looks cool. That's just personal preference, doesn't really matter. But now we wanna remove this prime tower, which you can make sure you're in global go to others, and right here, prime tower, disenable that. You could pause on this if you wanted to, but I find pausing on a brim much easier. So now you'll see that it's gone. We could just add the brim here in global, but that would actually cause a problem with it going first. And we actually want it to go do the, this first indenting part first, then do the, the little brim. So in order to do that, select this second model and go to others. Select outer brim only, change this to brim width of one and object gap of two. Then slice and you should see that we have a brim right here that's two layers thick, perfect. Now go to the first layer and you can use this little horizontal bar to view it. You would see that it is doing the QR code part first, then it goes on to the brim and then it does the rest of the model. And that is the rest of the model all the way up. So this is exactly what we wanted. Now that we're at this point, we can actually go ahead and export the model. So hit file, export, export at G code, and then just name it whatever you want. I'm calling it tutorial. Just make sure you can access it. And that's what we're going to do right now. So here is the little G code area. Open it with anything that can actually edit it. In this case, I'm going to open it with Visual Studio Code. I just found Visual Studio Code to be the easiest. You'll notice that it automatically does a restricted mode, which means we can't actually edit it. So I just have to go into trust. Then here we go. Uh, I can actually edit any of the G code lines. All right, so this is where we actually need to find the specific G-code line that we want to add a pause to. The most annoying thing about this is that you can't just go to like this, like you can with the vertical bar and add custom G-code here or add pause because this is vertical and we can't do that on the horizontal bar, which is actually quite a shame. Proves the slicer, you can edit the G code by just doing the second extruders. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an area to actually do this as there were no official areas to edit G code. Sure, there were very specific things that you could edit G code with, but not for this intended purpose. So, again, we need to find the area that we want to actually edit the G code. Go to the very first layer, make sure you're doing that. Then, right here, 
you'll see I want it to go the second it starts phasing into the second line of the brim. And that is... Okay, so right here it's already past that. You can fine tune this by just using arrow keys. So I'm going to do arrow keys for the rest of it right here. And right there is where we want. So for me, it looks like it is line 9211, which is where we want to add this custom line. So go into your editor and find that line. Line 9211 for me. Then you can just add this simple command, M400, make sure it's capitals, and U1. That's literally all we were trying to do. This adds a pause and save this. All right, just connect the USB stick, eject it, and you can load it onto the printer and then print it directly from there. So with the printer, all you're gonna need to do is load the filament that you want to be the indenting model and then print that and it will pause. All right, so it's paused. You can see that this is all we have to do. So, do not click resume printing right away. That is not good. So then just go over here, click the back arrow, and hit filament unload. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Then you'll have to load filament as well. And once it completes, you'll have two colors on the first layer. All right, so now to that potential improvement. What I was trying to do was, if we were to use the vertical bar and then add a filament change, it will also unload the filament. The thing is, is I was just going to try exporting two files and compare them, but found they added a lot more lines than I expected. So I still don't really know how to do it. So if you do, let me know in the comments, I would really appreciate it. Another potential improvement would be if there does happen to be an area like Prusa Slicer where you can actually just add the G code command and it will automatically do it. I don't think this exists, I sure couldn't find it, but it might. And if you know where it is, again, let me know. Well, anyways, hopefully this helped, and I'll see you later. Bye! And hopefully I didn't just destroy my computer by sitting out here in the cold. Actually, if you want to see where I'm sitting, I'll take a picture. And I'll show you the wet computer. <laughs> yeah, not so great. I'll go in.